Welcome to L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. That is the name of our podcast. Search for L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. And we have a YouTube channel. It stands for Let's Watch a Full-Length Movie on YouTube with Mike Spiegelman and Carl. And Carl, good to see you, man. Hi, Carl. Hey, Mike. I can't exactly see you, but I'm good to Skype you. Good to Skype you, man. Good to Skype you. Uh Carl, we have a special guest. We have Paul Brumba on the Ta-da. line. Hi, Paul. Ta-da! Great to be here, guys. Paul and I and Carl, we are all part of Mutiny Radio, and you can hear our shows first every Sunday. Just type in mutinyradio.fm into whatever, and you will get our uh, streaming service. Uh, Paul Brumba has a great, great, great podcast called The Edge of Insanity, that is on Sundays at noon. It's also available on iTunes, et cetera. And then we follow at 2 p.m. This is all Pacific Standard Time on Sunday. We do what our title says. We L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. It's so obvious. Carl, what movie are we watching today? Today we are watching Carnosaur, 1993. Carnosaur. So that's what you – Carnosaur. So you go – it's C-A-R-N – O S A U R. That's what you put in your YouTube search engine. Nineteen. Oh, so it's not carne with an E. Yeah, not meat sore. Right. It's and not. It's not Corona sore. And it's not Corona sore. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Not the Corona sore. <laughs> That's a million dollar idea, Paul. Yes, I know. So we like the channel D P O E N. Depoen, D D P O E N, yeah, Carnosaur, 1993, Roger Corman, D P O E N is the channel we like. Okay, so we want you to go find that, search for it, and when you see the link, click it, and then once you get to the page, hit pause for God's sake, move the slider to the left, so it should be zero zero zero. Did you do that? Good. We're very excited. We're very honored to have the Countdown King himself, the maestro of descending numerals. Let's get ready to brumba. The world don't move on the beat of a different brum. Brum, 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 brum. Under brumba, we please give it up for Paul Brumba. Ah, yeah. Hey. Brumba. All right, good to be here, guys. Man, I am so excited about this. Carnosaur. See, and I had it all mixed up with the other week show with uh, the Elvis flick, but we won't even talk about that. Elvis is a carnosaur. All right, cool. Here we go. <laughs> do this in true Carnosaur uh, style. <laughs> Let's do this in three. Oh, put your finger over the little triangle. Right. I almost forgot my own line. Wow. Holy smokes. Let's do this. Let's do it in three, <laughs> two, one, go. New Horizons, Roger Corman. He didn't direct this movie, right? It just no. he presents it. We Director's the same Corman guy we saw last out, week, right? Adam Simon. Yeah. So, the, wait a minute, the director of Brain Dead directed Carnosaur? Right, and he has the balls to put Brain Dead in this movie. 
So one of the characters watches his previously directed movie. Yeah. I mean, it's not even Quentin Tarantino and he's kissing his own butt. The worst part is they're doing a movie podcast about it in real time. <laughs> they took really? my idea. Our idea. Yeah, and everyone else's idea. Oh, right. Oh, it's the start of us. Chickens. Uh-oh. Bok, bok, chickens. <laughs> Aaron Osborne is a chicken. No, these are ostriches. This is the target species chicken. Usta like. Target species. None of these chickens. See, it says iguana. Iguana. So, yeah. So yeah. what they're doing is some genetic splicing here, and they're trying to arrive at a dinosaur. You know why they added the lizard? Because iguana add lizard to it. Mm-hmm. Iguana. Uh, I iguana think do iguana, it. I think Iguana do it. Yeah, I'll ask him, but I think Iguana. Yeah. So he's, they're mutating chickens into like a super monster. Ooh, look at that blood. Albatross. That was a big problem about the project. That albatross that hung on them like something. Yeah, it hung around uh -oh, there. Oh, pelican. Oh, they're naked chickens. The Corman's... Wow. Corman's executive produced this, but this is directed by Brain Dead director. Right, Adam Ugh. Simon, the guy who the the player, the movie The Player pokes fun at. And um Yeah, you can you tell that story again cuz that's a great story you had mentioned in last week's episode. Well, I mean, it's just it was part of the movie. Uh the the player was Tim Tim Robbins and it his Griff, he's Griffin Mill and uh, they're shooting some movie and he just says who let Adam Simon on the lot they're just stabbing him okay here's a meeting <laughs> <laughs> here's a meeting and this guy wants to know uh, where Dr. Jane Tiptree is because she's gone missing ah uh, she has huh Dr. Jane Tip. Do they call her? Tree. They should page her. Dr. Jane Tiptree. Well, you oh, we tried everything. The, um, There's no response. <laughs> we, yeah, right. Did you page her? It's, it's, yes, it's 1993. Of course we paged her. We paged her. We faxed her. We sent a telegram. What else can we do? Now, Let's you remember the, the Eunice Corporation from last movie. Um, Certainly, they were doing a lot of brain dead experimentation right. uh, on a serial killer or something. And it had know, an infinity hacker. symbol, like the sideways eight. Yeah, he made a big deal out of that, Adam Simon. Yes, the infinity. Does it show up at Carnosaur? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, right now, the guy from Eunice Corpor Corporation is saying, yeah, we got Dr. Chain Tiptree. Uh, we... See, it says Eunice on the camera. Yeah, look at there it is. It's, it's going to say so Eunice. This is part of the everything. So this is part of the Adam Simon verse. Yes. Okay, Diane Ladd. She is Doctor Jane Tiptree. It says it right there, Carl. She's working in secret for Eunice. And she has to have total seclusion, and they're not a no, allowed to know what she's working on for three years, or they lose the rights yeah. of their patents. So five bucks says she never leaves this set. Five bucks, I'm not taking movie. that vet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you seen it. And how many times have you seen Carter for? <laughs> I've seen it four times. This is my fifth time. Oh dear lord. Dear Lord. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, well, it was great having you, Carl. Let's just stop this. <laughs> Imagine this is an elaborate prank. I just wanted you to watch Carter Surf and Five Times. Da, 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 da. Check you. Uh, we just came in to clean up. <laughs> Diane oh, no, they're on TV. five days on this film five days and she was right there in that uh, set the whole time
and she's top billing. And, and she's, you know, I, full disclosure, I did see this movie in the theater in 1993. Wow. Uh, and she was the best part of it. Okay. Well, you know, uh, one of the things we should mention is that Corman is the master of uh, just ripping off the current movies. And this came out the same weekend as Jurassic Park, which uh, gave him enough free publicity. Well, it was look, theatrically released, and I right. saw it. Yeah. I just want to say that the guy who I did saw it in Brooklyn. Too, the guy who did Cars Life Two, he's the master. He's the master. But uh, Roger, you're right. Car- no, I take that back. In- Go ahead, well, tell coming, them. You tell everybody like here. Jurassic Park was coming out. Yeah. So Jurassic Park was coming out, and his idea was to release a, a killer dinosaur movie of his own, Carnosaur. And it played at the Brookline, in Brookline, Massachusetts, there's a movie house, like an art house, and they showed it. And everyone, including myself, lined up because here's a chance to see a Roger Corman movie in 1993 in the theater. And we were really excited. It was a new Corman. Uh, and this was before he, he was cranking out sci-fi movies and he had other mediums to deliver his films, but uh, the movie was terrible. I mean, I, I, at least from what I remember, it was an awful experience, but we experienced it together. Right. You remember right. Oh, to, you know, traditionally on this show, we I asked you at the end of the movie, did you like this movie? But I, I'm going to cut all pretensions and just ask you in the first 10 minutes of our watching, what uh, did you think of the film? No, I did not. Uh, this was not well done. No. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're proud because I have seen this and I, I agree. This is really not well done. So we'll There's see why reasons to uh, like as it. the film goes on. There's reasons to like it and it's good yeah. on your show, but it's just not enough to be like, I mean, I wouldn't watch it a sixth time. <laughs> what about the sequels? Are you going to see Carnosaur 2 or Carnosaur 3? Nope. You're right about that. There was Carnosaur 2 and Carnosaur 3, and then there were two spinoffs. They just didn't call them Carnosaur. One was called Raptor and one was called The Eden Formula. So that makes five films off of Thanks to Jurassic Park was going to one day come out. Wow. (laughs) That's a nut. Yeah. Uh, You know, this plant looks pretty foul. (laughs) Okay. Poultry plant. Something is missing, you see, and Jane Tiptree wants it back. And so they're saying nobody is in and out of the place. So the driver goes, come on, bud. I got to be in such and such in five hours and I'm late, you know. So he let him out. So in the back of this chicken truck is something mysterious. Uh, Does it rhyme with dinosaur? (laughs) It does rhyme with dinosaur, yes. (laughs) Actually, Vitasaur or Carnosaur, that's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. See, I always thought this movie was Carnosaur, like it was made out of meat. It's yeah, he's a carnivore. Carnosaur. Yeah. Carnosaur. Oh, but he, so, but the, he doesn't eat plants then, right? He's not an omnivore. Omnisaur. No, he's not an omnivore, no. Omnisaur. Um, I'm starting an all-plant-based diet. Mike, did I tell you about that? No, Carl, you didn't tell me about your all plant diet. Yeah, I mean, uh, diet. well, by all plant based, I mean only foods that have been manufactured in a food processing plant. Well, so, <laughs> like mac and cheese, crap yeah. mac and cheese. Oh yeah, sure, but of course, but uh, but but no, especially funyuns. Funyuns are the shit, yo. <laughs> they're all they're all natural. I mean, they're not made out of like imaginary stuff no they're made out of fun yeah okay so what's happened is what's escaped from jane tiptree's lab uh has now killed it killed chickens and then it killed the chicken driver now here's brain dead really he looks cool man he looks like arnold i thought that was arnold schwarzenegger for a second yeah right Uh, oh be drinking beer Oh, he's not even drinking beer. He's going for the hard stuff. No, that's a beer. He says, better a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. A bottle. Oh, boy. Aaron Simon, he he fucking got the continuity going. That's a reference to his previous film, where he got a lobotomy, or he gave a lobotomy. 
He gave, gave a lobotomy. Okay, now this guy's job is to protect all the heavy equipment on this mountain where they're strip mining. And the hippy dippy guys uh -huh. are like fucking with them because they don't like the big corporation. And that's why he's shooting at them? Right. Seems extreme. Well, it's keeping them away can't, like, wait. from the site, you know. Yeah. So he could wave like a, a stick at him. Dang hippies. Now, it's this. Uh oh, no, he's a killdozer. <laughs> That's right. Good one, Mike. <laughs> 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 That was a switch. Let's, uh, let's hope he. Uh, phew. Oh no, it's a killdozer soundtrack. Blip, 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 blip. Oh no, it's. Now, now it's followed by the band Killdozer. Knuckles was a dog, was a very fine dog. <laughs> Remember no. how they all looked the same? Like, they got one actor to save money? Jesus Christ, that was the second time I did extensive research, and I just couldn't tell any of those guys apart. <laughs> See, I was just... four people in that movie. You know, on a, on a heavy loader? Yeah. Okay, he's found a prisoner. And she's... Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Kelly Preston. It's a uh, Jennifer Runyon. Like a day Monet. And she was in Ghostbusters. Too. Jennifer Runyon. Do you remember they were doing that task? The, uh, yeah. Like what? A couple she of wavy was, lines. Like what do I have on the card? She was well, the right. Yeah, the flirt, flirt bait for uh, Bill Murray. That's a memorable scene. Yeah. But that was like 11 years prior to this. That was 84. So I, nine years. 84, yeah. And then she was on Charles in Charge from 84 to 87 as... Um, well, what, way to bury the right lead, there. Carl. Way to bury the lead. Of course I know who she is. She's from <laughs> Charles in Charge, the first family. And she was Cindy Brady in A Very Brady Christmas, 1988. This is her last thing she ever Cindy. did on camera. She She quit after this. Wow. Well, let's uh, be grateful that she's in this movie then. Yes. Very Brady Christmas. Yeah, Jennifer Funyon. <laughs> Funyon's already... Did she, she play Marsha? Did she replace somebody? Did Funyon replace somebody? No. Heir to the, 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 the Funyon. As you know from reading uh, Hollywood Dogs That Drink, Cindy Yes, had they had a tiger for Brady Bunch. Right. Cindy was a... She, you know, Cindy fell into ruin after the Brady Bunch, and she tried to sleep with, what's that dog's name? Tiger. Tiger. Yeah, remember she was, like, yanking on his pocket rocket. It's, it's in the book. Uh, so they needed somebody to be Cindy, because Cindy was <laughs> na now nowhere to be found. And that was Jennifer Runyon. Interesting. Now, this is the coroner. Wow, that's a claim to fame. It is. Yeah. And I don't know why she went away. Her name is Thrush in this film. Like, it's their hippie name. Her oh. real name is Anne. And this guy is a professional coroner who doesn't wear goggles or masks when cutting out shit. Good, <laughs> good to know. Right, his mask is down. Even, Yeah, even Quincy puts up, ties his fucking mask up. Right. You know, every time they go to a corner in any movie. It's never got blood on it. medical it's exam, no blood on it. Yeah, look, I'm going to use, I, I don't have time to take my glove off, so I'll just use a rotary phone now. <laughs> yeah, and spread the germ. Nine, eight, smear. Now, you know, my favorite part of medical examiners in movies, they're always eating a sandwich when they show up. <laughs> what do you got? Well, you know, right? Because it wants to show that they're so used to gore. Yeah, right. They don't even care. And they also don't mind when, like, Dirty Harry shows up. Oh, Harry, hey, way to break up the monotony of my day. I just went through two corpses. Yeah, of course I'll talk about this body. <laughs> now, the guy who wrote a book called Carnosaur was approached to write the screenplay in 1991 
uh, by Corman's wife, Julie, but they didn't do anything with it until Jurassic Park. He bought the rights to this in 91, but it just sat around. And then when Jurassic Park was coming out, okay, there was this guy, Mike Elliott, he's the co-producer. And he, and he says that Corman was like, now's the time to shoot because he, you know, he knew he could make the movie faster than anyone else and get it out there. And he could, he could eat the hype of Jurassic Park. Well, because Jurassic Park was hype to begin with. Yeah. I, I remember, uh, you, you know, my late father was a, a, a entertainment journalist and he did some book reviews and he would get some press copies. Mm-hmm. And we received like a, an advanced copy of it. And it was like a hot item. You know what I mean? Like even before the publication, everybody knew that Michael Crichton had cranked out like a mega yeah. movie, uh, mega, you know. Because it was. So it was, a, it was very hot property. Yeah. And it was, it was already optioned. By the time it hit hardcover, uh, the first initial release, it was already optioned to be a movie. Yeah. So Now, you know, this book, Carnosaur, uh, predates Jurassic Park by six years. It was written six years earlier mm. than Michael Crichton's book. Do so you think Crichton ripped them off? No. <laughs> like, he did, like he did the previous book, My Wife's in a Coma? Oh, what great. a great idea! <laughs> no, wasn't it like a Michael Crichton did? A, he's a weird guy, like pop culture wise, because not yeah. only is he like a popular, famous novelist, but he wrote and directed his own movies, Westworld and Coma. Oh. He was like a mega movie director for for a streak. Andronica Stream is that him? Westworld. Stream. I'm I'm gonna say yeah. That's intense. I don't know. I just got to tell you what happened. The doc, sure. this guy was a doctor, but he he's he's a drunk, so now he's just guards uh, the you know the heavy equipment. But the girl ran away because he passed out drunk, right? So the cop right. took him and said, "Do you see the girl here?" Now clearly he did see the girl, but he lied and said, "Nah, she isn't here." So now. Charles in Charge girl, Jennifer Funyon, has got a crush on the doc, is grateful to the doc. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, so this starts their bond. That's right. This starts their bond, sure. which will grow throughout the film. Here we are doing the work you know, of the heavy loader place. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, Doc is, cool of course, sunset. drunk again, and Funyun shows mm-hmm. up to say thanks. Yeah, it's thanks for nothing. Mm-hmm. Michael Crichton did direct uh, Westworld. Wow. I, I, was, uh, I was correct. I loved yeah, that movie. Yeah, he was movie. like an unstoppable force. But yeah, the first one's good. And then, you know, the future world was shot in my university, I believe. Br- uh, uh, Brad Knight is used Brady? with... Brad... Yeah, there's, they had an auditorium that was so future like. It Where'd appeared in Brandeis. Brandeis, that's. I went to school at Brand. Yeah, right. Brandeis. You know how, like, you buy brand name rice? Brandeis. <laughs> Michael it's, took a chance they on had an, uh, and rolled the Brandeis. <laughs> yeah, snake eyes. So, the, you know, like, uh, their grad, one of their grad auditorium is like futuristic looking and they use it for the movie. And it's like, whoa, look at Peter Fonda. He's in the future. Yeah. So wait, future world. Now I it's, saw Westworld. Uh, right, I better write that with down. Will Brenner. Future World's the sequel. Well, there was like a TV show in 1980 called Beyond Westworld. Yeah. Like it had a life of its own. Like it, the HBO show, which I enjoy wasn't the only uh, Westworld TV show. Okay. Future World sounds very familiar, but... You know what it was like? Westworld was big, and then there was a porno called Sex World. Really? Which I haven't seen. And then there was a a sequel to Westworld, theatrical release, called Future World. And then there was Beyond Westworld. Okay, Beyond Westworld, which was a movie also? No, it was five episodes. Well, it was, uh, I think it was, an, it was a 1980 TV series. I just know of it because I know the uh, 
Okay. Best World Universe, but I haven't seen it. I'm sure it's on the YouTube. Future World? Or you type it in the streaming service. Okay. Beyond Future uh No, Future World is the sequel. Yeah, yeah. And Beyond, then Beyond Westworld. Westworld, that's it. So Bronson, you who know, wrote kind of this book, panel? he didn't like this. Yeah. He didn't like it at all, this adaptation. In order to do things cheaply, they... Bronson's book had a lot of dinosaurs. This one only has two dinosaurs. Right. Uh, uh, Gertie the dinosaur from Windsor McKay's cartoons. Right. And, in Barney. And, and Barney. And Barney. And Barney the dinosaur. Yeah. Really two decades, uh, two centuries. All right. Now Barney is getting pissed. And he, oh, there goes Barney attacks. Oh, no. And Barney vision. What a 90s attack. It looks like an ad for <laughs> Oh my god, he's covered in fudge. He's wiping fudge all over everything. Oh no, the carnage starts ripping into her guts. Way yeah. to go. Edie, yeah. Now Simon, that was a hand sure puppet. There's so many cu- hand puppet? Really? For real? Yeah, they did a lot of uh they did a remote controlled puppet. They did a man in a suit. They did a, a full-size, like, 16-foot-tall robot. They did a lot of different things to make. There it is. Yeah. So that was the hand puppet right now. That Well, I don't know what that particular shot was. But anytime the dinosaur's up close and doing, like, a eating thing, it's it's the hand puppet. So what kind of – how tall is the gentleman that was in the dinosaur suit? I mean, that was like a baby di- uh, carnosaur. Yes, that's right, because this is early in the film, and the thing is growing. Mm. You see, the, the I was trying to tell you about the car, uh, the car coroner. Um, like, he isn't sure what did it, because the thing, it was like, um, the, like maybe the size of a bobcat, but it, but it sort of looks like lizard bites, it, you know, he... So later on, he'll be like, this is the same thing, but the bites are much bigger. That'll keep occurring. And he's like, hold me. Either there's more than one or this thing is growing. <laughs> okay, well, so what do you think it is? You've seen this movie. Yeah. It's growing. <laughs> so Eunice Corporation is now learning that they found a genetic marker in you know, people who are getting killed. Uh, and it's... Did it say Office Depot marker? That's pretty generic. <laughs> it was universal product symbol. Um, <laughs> and so if it's true, that means a chicken is killing people. Cut to a guy eating chicken on the road. Right, and he's saying, you should have some. It's good for your health. Look, that's the guy in the suit. Ah, uh, right. Is the other guy Seth Green? Oh, that's the guy in the suit, really? Yeah, and there's Funyun walking home. Crunch. She and went to say that. You because she's in a bright job. orange bag. But they fought. They fought about environmentalism. So she's walking. So she's out of here. Yeah. She's all pissed. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Right. Well, she's Cindy now. Not Jan. But just for Christmas, and it was a very Brady Christmas because he was... It was uh, 1988, yeah, just before... Ah, that's way... That's long in the tooth, Brady Bunch special. Yes, exactly. You know, they, was the they, nostalgia. They, yeah, and the thing is, like, they still crank it out. There was the HGTV show where they bought the Brady's exterior house. Mm-hmm. And then they had the cast of the original cast of Brady Bunch come in and they re- redid it to resemble the house. That's the so set. like them to do that because they listen, th- that movie was that television show was popular. And when it when it was in syndication and on at like five o'clock every day, it turned into nostalgia for it. Right. They cashed in on that every chance they could. Right. No, sure. Well, a very Brady sequel in the uh, the first Brady Bunch movie from the nineties. They're both great. Yeah. Do you remember the stupid parody yeah, they... movie? 
it which was, one? It was like 2000. The Brady's. Remember the guy goes, Yeah, I think we're thinking of car jack. And he goes, Well, of course it's a car, right. but my name's not Jack. My it's name's Greg. Greg Brady. Sure, I thought, I thought that came out. I, that's the movie I'm talking about. Uh, but I think that came out in the 90s. Hmm. So I, that's possible. I do know. Yeah. Yeah, I think so because you, I was talking about the PSE and G. Yeah, you might. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll look it up. Now they're yeah. finding a dead guy by the road. Of course, he was eaten by a carnosaur. Well, yeah. You could you could tell because there's like carnosaur chomps everywhere <laughs> on his body. Carnosaur chomps. And they they tip. <laughs> <laughs> the carnivores are tip ten percent, which you know they're lousy tippers when they eat. They're lousy tippers, those carnivores. So John Bronson was in nineteen eighty four was doing a like book signing tour, and Roger Corman was like, "Hmm, what's this?" That's when he took notice of him, and then his wife Julie, you know, his Roger Corman said, "Sick him." And she like made a deal <laughs> on a at a bar written on a napkin. Wow, that's classic. In ninety one, yeah. And that's what Diane Ladd read. Did they what about the script? Do they use actual paper for the script or they just no. put the napkins? Right. They use the napkins. <laughs> wow, a carnivore just ate the shit out of it. Oh that's the puppet? Uh I didn't pay attention to tell you, but if it's up close and like chewing out guts, it's the puppet. With someone's hand up is gotcha. Well. I love the font. It reminds me of like unskippable game scenes. Like, come on, I want to get to the action. <laughs> so he's telling the senator that this is the best blueberry pie he's ever tasted because it's like got a thin layer of goat embryo protecting it. And then the senator's like, blech, gross. Yeah. I might as well say I, I have semen, my semen in the pie center. <laughs> get blah. I think we're. I think I'm a couple of seconds behind you, but that's okay. I'll live. It's because Paul does the countdown. He goes three, two, one. Then he goes whatever the fuck. You know he he doesn't. Right, he's got you in a rhythm. Three, two, one, and then you click. But no, he goes g g go. Right. Like you know, he always does that. Why does it, he's the countdown king? So he gets he everybody. He's the countdown off. king. He's you the maestro I mean? descending numerals. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, he is the maestro descending numerals, but the saying the word go, he's a little wonky on it. So the thing is, Mike, how many times have you and I right? We get go. We should be a hundred percent synced, and you know. Like that doesn't happen when it's the uh, Brumbot, right? Oh well, I don't know about that. I'm not gonna vouch again. I'm not gonna pit human bot against human. Don't worry, he's not gonna listen to this show. Okay, so we're back to Jane Tiptree. Um, Diane, yeah, Ladd. I see. It, it says that. What's, and what's your latitude? Uh, and what's your latitude and, and longitude? Well, it where wherever this lab is, that's her all the only place she's gonna. Okay, now we find out that right. she's a son of a bitch. She's got the guy who let the dinosaur go, and she's like right. kidnapped his daughter, and now he's a prisoner. How how does he kidnap the daughter without leaving the lab? I don't know. And then she's like making him feel terrible seeing she's like yes feel angry allow yourself to feel that she's being such an a-hole <laughs> and she lies that the daughter's alive and then has a dinosaur eat this guy <laughs> so uh, let me get this straight carl because you have seen this movie five times yes she says how did your carelessness caused dinosaurs to eat people, and that is cardinal sin. So right. I'm going to have a dinosaur eat you. Right. That's right. I'm going to kidnap your daughter to get you here. I'm going to lie that's... to you about her health and well-being, and then I'm going to have a dino eat you. See, that's just like 
Why can't you just have the dino eat you? Why do you have to kidnap the daughter? Like, what are you going to do? Like, okay, uh, there's no ransom money because your father has been eaten by a carnosaur. <laughs> Eunice Corporation. Look, uh, he's in like a... Uh, yeah. Is it a super collider? Yeah, you think they shot that in a super collider? I would doubt it. You can it. see a scientist in the background going... You can see a scientist in the background going, listen, Julie, we're just doing this for the money. <laughs> yeah, we took Corman's money. But they were in and out in two hours. Oh, my name is Adam Simon. I've directed Diane Ladd. <laughs> oh, well, come on in. Please. St. Peter opens the doors for you. Well, he also... Was in uh, oh, oh. He wrote the script called Bones. It was a Snoop Dogg vehicle. Uh, he did The Haunting in Connecticut in 2009. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that movie. <laughs> okay, he created and oh, that was a scary produced try the TV. Thing. He created and produced the TV series Salem, 2014 to 2017. That's pretty good. I get, Yeah, I remember that. I, I do know that Haunting in Connecticut is probably the scariest tri-state movie I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to say that. I tried to state it. I try I try state. I tried to I try state. To, I try. You can yeah. You know what's funny? It's Connecticut thinks Connecticut. it's New England. Isn't that funny? No, it's tri state. I know it's in two, it's in both New England and Lucky Them. They think they're New England. So you get, really they get two kinds of. Com well, if you still watch uh, terrestrial TV on in Connecticut, you get two kinds of ads: one aimed for the tri-state and one aimed right. for the New England. New England. They think the Patriots represent them. As soon as you yeah. drive into well, Connecticut, it's just, right? It's like a border town. You drive uh -huh. in there, you start seeing all these old-timey uh, uh, New England style architecture <laughs> it, it's everyone's nice. drinking moxie cola mm -hmm. yeah there's like weird potato chips like this, these aren't wise where's the right. wise potato chips yeah oh you're in connecticut now cape cod can potato yeah. chips because we're so it's, it's old like, mother you know, trying to say like see see you've arrived yup uh-huh you're here new england no 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 connecticut you're a border town well, I always thought it was like in New, New Jersey, you could say, well, there's northern New Jersey and there's southern New Jersey. Right. But is there like something in Connecticut that's like half tri-state the state and then half New England the state? Good question. I wouldn't know. Good, good question. Uh, Look, Ron Howard's uh, uh -oh. brother, Gentle Ben. Come here. Uh, Star Trek reference. That is our Star Trek Remember connection. Remember when he was four years old? Ooh, and that chili was in gen Next Generation. <laughs> His name is Fryer in this. Oh, by the way, everyone's been sneezing. Like, everybody has a cold. That'll play into the... That'll play into the plot. Yeah. But not in a good way, I take it. You remember Gentle Ben? You're just a... I'm just a little older than you. You probably miss Gentle Ben. Yeah, I mean, there were repeats, but I don't think I, I watched it as heavily as I did, say, The Brady Bunch. Yeah. Well, duh. No, but Gentle Ben was when I was just old enough to, like, realize TV was a thing. Like, I'm just a little, I think I'm two years older than you. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. Maybe a year and a half. When are you born? 68? Late 68. Late 68, and I'm early so October. 66. So, yeah, it's less. Hey, look, it's the producer and his wife in the movie. <laughs> That's right. It's not. But it's just some goof. Uh, okay, so you probably know He's him. From, uh, he was in uh, Apollo 13. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've thought every time he's, on, it, he's in every one of his brother's movies right. for the most part. And he's, Austin Powers. he's like the ice cream man. Yeah. Yeah, he's in Austin Powers. Well, he only does a cameo. He'll remember at the end of the Austin Powers movies that like they sound like they're gonna say penis or dick and then, right. then they cut to someone else saying something else. Yeah. That was his bit. Yeah, he would say, Of course 
According to the radar, it looks like the rockets is going straight up there. Arsenal. We need more arsenal. Okay, so they chained themselves. This is the robot. They chained themselves to the um, heavy equipment. And Doc said, you know what? Forget it. There's something. Look, he goes, yeah, hey, my green friend. <laughs> now, look, this guy's name, oh, yeah. his Hippie. name is Pizza. His name is Pizza. Okay. Yeah. Looks like uh, not delivery. Robot. Oh, no. Yeah. Watch his face. Oh. Pizza! Yeah, it looks like roadkill. Yeah, pizza. Looks like pizza. Marinara. Okay, so now the girl, it ladies, like gonna a... get it. Now you will see an somebody tugging her fuck? foot. You'll see his hand on camera. Okay. Right. All right. Not yet. Not well, yet. Now you should see his hand. A hand. See. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Total perv. Look now, at that upskirt. Mom, when she loses her leg, she's like, "Okay, he's he's busy uh, getting my oh, leg." Oh, okay. Yeah, well, you know, I get kind of, look at him, he's picking his teeth with it. Yeah, I'm looking like a good stogie. Should, hey, Carl, do you want to pause or something? Because I'm a couple of seconds behind you, but I, I mean, normally I am anyway. Uh, yeah, okay, so uh, I'm at 05, 06, 07, 08, 09. What about okay. you? I'm at 06 right now. Okay, so I want you to keep going and you tell me when you get to 20. Okay. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to get there in when you get three. To 21. Okay, 21. Okay, that sucks. All right. That was not counting. Where are you now? <laughs> well, you, you said 21, but it was at 20. I, uh, you know. Okay, so I'm at 32, 33, 34, 35. What about you? Okay, we're at this. We're queued up. We're good. Oh, we're good. good. Okay. We got the breath. He's coughing. He's passing by a pukey body, but he didn't puke. That's pizza. So he's upset because they're all dead. And you know what that means. That means girl's dead. But now he finds her. She isn't. Oh, no. She's our hero. She, she gets the same kind of abuse that everyone else does, but she doesn't drop dead instantly. We see that usually these like, two are they... fighting, right? So now, you know, now it's being shown his real feelings. He really likes her. So this is the coroner talking to the cop about the bites getting bigger. Oh, huh, I wonder if they could figure this out. Quincy. Maybe. So wait, is Carnosaur growing like exponentially? Like, yeah. This is just it's the same animal. It's a fast grower. Wow, this acting is pretty wooden. Oh, that's the corpse. Sorry. He's the corpse. <laughs> Good one. It's a dinosaur bite. Don't worry, I'm a professional. I worked at Jurassic Park. I've seen this before. <laughs> now, the body count in this is only 32. I think that's pretty low. That's pretty fucking high. It's good. Like usually these movies, you know, the carnosaur just shows up randomly and then eats one or two, but they've already, he's already eaten a good number of people. Okay. I think he, I don't know. All right. 32 is, you think 32 is a fair body count? Uh, yes, sir. I think it's a, a more than generous body count. Oh, by the way, Rod, Roger Ebert said this was the worst movie of 93. Well, I'm going to agree with Mr. Ebert for once. Yeah, and of course it's, that it's asshole Francisco, just to be different, was like, I liked it! Get out. How can you like this? Right. I now, mean, really, we've already tipped our hat. We hate this movie, but I mean, how can you hit, like... So, what she's doing now is finding his drawings and stuff and being like, maybe he's not such a bad guy. But then she finds, like, this bloody That's stuff. You. I thought she was like, he did have etchings back in his bedroom. It wasn't bullshit. 
Uh oh. Wow. Press the X button. Now that was enough to get rid of Carnosaur. Carnosaur was like, "All right, fuck it then. I'll, I can eat plenty of people. I don't need to get shot at." Yeah. Hey, man. I'm not bullet sore. I eat meat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why would you feed me bullet? That looks like a retail. Not again. Oh, why did I let that Carnosaur escape? This guy's name is Raphael Sabarge, and it's S B A R G E. Sabarge. No I saw vowel. that. Yeah, like sub. Well, what's the name of that chain in the East Coast, Sabaros? Oh right, uh, the is that's a hot dog. Uh, S B. You're right. You're right. That was a rumor. I think the Fat Boys went in there and cut screw. When they're all you can eat, when they eat, they go to Nathan's in New York in Times Square and eat and eat the wallpaper. I didn't see it on purpose. Uh, okay, now trust me, if it was on YouTube, we were watching it. He's pretending to be a guy who's bringing back to Jane the the dinosaur. Okay, Jane Tiptree, but right. really it's. It's Doc. He wants to know what's going on. Now, this part of the, once again, we're in Biodome. We're in Biodome. Oh, wait a minute. So we watched uh, his last movie was also shot in the same location as the right. movie Biodome. Right. Well, he works cheap. I mean, then again, this is a Corman movie, as was the last one. So they, you know, he may not have a say in it. They may say, "Look, we got." Biodome it's available. a water like, reclamation yeah, okay, great. plant, and they they rent the place out a lot of times for a lot of movies. The Fugitive? Uh, the list isn't in front of me. I did read it to you last time. I know it's Biodome, and uh, there was Star Trek episodes shot there. Um, I forget now. But the thing is, it's nonsensical. What he does, he wants to understand what's going on. So he holds her at gunpoint, goes into her lab, and that's it. He's here for the rest of the film, and basically they have a long conversation. It doesn't make any sense. Really? Yeah, because, well, then, I mean, I remember something happening in the Diane lab, which we'll have to wait to see, but you don't it happens in the it? Uh, lab, right? <laughs> We've been so good. It? We haven't ruined the ending of this movie. It All right, well, we are 45 alien. minutes. Let's go ahead. Go ahead and ruin it because I want to make sure our listeners listen to the entirety of the movie. And they might abandon us before the end of this. Well, I want to say she'll give birth to a dinosaur, but she won't give birth to it. It'll pop out of her stomach. And it was on purpose. It was of her own design. It's her fiendish plot. See, there's eggs right there. It's kind of foreshadowing. So she got herself pre impregnated with Carnosaur she and she gave birth by dropping a Carnosaur egg and then the Carnosaur popped out of it. She got everybody pregnant. She got them sick with a virus and that virus somehow made a dinosaur grow in every woman and every woman will give birth to a dinosaur and die. Including this woman. Yeah. Because the guy's hugging his pregnant wife. That's right. Holy her. Shit, what a fucking movie. So come for the Jurassic Park ripoff and stay for the forced impregnation of dinosaur baby eggs. Right. Th spread through a contagion virus. Uh, it's to the virus to movie. And race and bring dinosaurs back. That's what Jane Tiptree wants this, to do. This movie. Holy fuck. That's the actual plot of this movie. Yeah. That is so depressing. I'm so bummed out by that. She's saying right now, I, I'm i sick too. I have a fever. And he's like, go lay down. I'll make my own breakfast. Give me that. <laughs> now he's, he's going to make... He's a good husband. But something weird's going to happen. Uh -oh. Yeah, I don't want to see this. It's going to be all bloody and shit, right? Or there's going to be a That's dino right. baby in there? That's, well... Yeah. No. Here's the first one. All right, here we go. Oh, come on, do three eggs, man. You know you want to eat a hearty breakfast. You're a big boy. Egg. One egg. Oh. What the? 
And it smells. It smells, too. Oh, good thing it has another bowl behind there. Yeah, it's got plenty. Where's that pile of clean bowls? Oh, by the sink. Ew. Oh, I'm glad we synced up for this. What? Oh, careful, you. Oh. oh. Clutch? That's clutch. Oh, no, gross. Carl, I'm going to pukey. Now, I would expect Roger Corman to have it bite his finger, right? That makes sense. Right. Doesn't happen. Hi, I'm looking for my brother. Yeah. Brother, are you in here? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what oh, the boy. heck is He's oh, Clint. chicken. He just had a big meal, yeah. remember? I think it's kind of tacky to eat chicken in a fried chicken in a slaughterhouse. <laughs> the, remember that show, Louie? He was like, well, our chickens are dumb. Aren't they a little leery? We think they'd be a little leery of us by now. But no, they're just, <laughs> there's never any protest. You never see like a Martin Luther chicken. Oh, no. Bye-bye, Clint. Vi Vi Clint, who is an avid golfer, but can't be a golfer anymore. Um, he had a hip Why replacement that? and he had to quit. Was it because Carnosaur bit his head off? No, it bit his hip off. He used to play 150 rounds a year, he brags. That's every other day. Oh, well, who can blame him? I mean, he's been in the industry for so long. He must have a certain routine down. He's got a lot of time free to play golf. He also has a lot of free time because he plays World of Warcraft. Um, really? Well, yeah. well, that's great. He doesn't have to pay for skins to look like himself. Well, he does have that. Um, he is known for his activity in the World of Warcraft game. Howard plays a game, the game under the name Extas, E-X-T-A-S, on the Herod Classic Realm. How cool is that? He must have been doing that for a while. Yeah. The I thing is, if you're a Hollywood a guy, you you know, you go do uh My Name is Earl episode, and then you're off for the rest of the day, you know? Right, yeah, yeah. They need you for a day shoot for Pumpkinhead 4, and then you, you got the rest of the afternoon. Now, he brings it to the coroner, which I guess makes sense. Right, there's only four actors in this movie. Is he in a body bag? Oh, no, no, no. No, she's just sick, and so she's bundled up. He's just checking on his patients now. Everybody's sick. There's nothing he can do but have them sit around. There's no cure. So is it the coronavirus? Yeah, the carnosaurus virus. Oh, did you say carnosaur? No, I said coronavirus. This is a mockbuster. Wow, this is pickle. called a mockbuster. Ooh. Wow, so all these women are mock they know Jurassic they're pregnant? Park, right? Yeah. This is like the sick room. So this is like, a, oh, this guy's like, go ahead, dude. This film made about a million bucks. They spent 850000 to make it, and it made $1.8 so just under a million dollars right. they made. Uh, that's why Roger Corman does it. Well, you, you know, like it did have a theatrical release. They did have the hype about going against Jurassic Park, but in reality, yes. they were playing like in the Brookline in these little small art house theaters, you know, like your little hipster theaters. So it wasn't like it was playing at the AMC. No, no, no. Okay, so. The assistant says, Doc, you know, Dr. Tip, uh, Dr. Tip T Tree, can I go home? I feel sick. She goes, yes, but come down here first. I want to examine you. And now Doc, who got her at gunpoint, right, is just sort of hanging out in the lab now. Right. He's not even, you yeah, know, is, like, is it He put his gun away, right? I guess so. Like, he got himself down there under gunpoint, and then he didn't do anything <laughs> with her. And now it's business as usual for her. 
Yeah. I know, it's really weird. Well, I, I'm sure, like, they just edited whatever scenes they had with her just to get this movie out. <coughs> like, it's probably not Diane. Diane Ladd, man, she's been in some good movies. And her, she's the mother of uh, uh, Laura Dern, right? Right, she's the mother of Laura Dern, and so everybody thinks that that's why she got the part. Uh, she won... Academy Award for Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, 74. She won a Golden Globe yeah, for great movie. the TV show Alice, you know, in between 80 and 81. Um, she received Emmy Award nominations for Wild at Heart, Rambling Rose. She was in Chinatown, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, Ghosts of Mississippi, Primary Colors, 28 Days. And she's the mother of Laura Dern and the ex-husband, her ex-husband is Bruce Dern. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're all great actors. I love Laura Dern. Fucking, I don't know if you ever saw that movie where uh, uh, Matt Damon goes small, downsizing. Right. And it's a little small guy. Yeah. She's fucking amazing in that movie. And then uh, she's good in uh, Big Little Eyes. I like everything Laura Dern does. And I, like, I like Diane Ladd and I like Bruce Dern. He's so act. Okay, now, uh -oh. she was it's sick. A girl, She died, and now look what came out. Right, I'll take that. Husband's like, what the fuck just happened? Is it the husband? No, that's the... No, that's that guy. Look how calm he is. The, she was sick. She wasn't even pregnant. She just gave birth to a thing. Look at the yeah. mist coming out of the lab. See? Why is that weird? It's it must just be movies. Oh, look at Welcome to my museum of eggs. Well, she's okay. saying, be careful. Don't fuck with my eggs. And that's a strong, you know, later he'll be all happy about that because he can threaten her. Exactly. Oh, I'm going to shoot the egg. This is the most exciting I'm going to shoot the egg scene in That's movie right. history. <laughs> that is the most intense I'm going to shoot your egg scene I've ever seen. So, oh, yeah. Up there with the scene in Casablanca. The crew was given more time than usual in Corman Productions. Now, this was shot in 18 days, the principal photography at least. But... Simon, Adam Simon had six months to research and write it off the book. Um, they ignored a lot of plot points from the book, but I'm saying six months because of the special effects and everything. <clears throat> they right. didn't want to use stop motion because it would take too long and interfere with the filming. Real-time models, that's better, what they though. went with. And green camera work. Yeah. How can we get into it? Yeah. Well, it's the point of view of the carnosaur. You see the chroma, chromatic uh, vision. So the rebel forces need to go here because the... Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, it's not Star Wars. I don't know. It, um, so they had a three-foot T-Rex animatronic puppet. They had regular hand puppets. They had a suit model, you know, the suit, and they had the full-scale prop, of course, which was the robot, and it had a system life, like hinges and cables and pulleys. Uh, they had a lot of different uh, uh, puppets and robots and such. I heard, I heard they had to use part of the script to make that uh, carnosaur. Now it's turning into a pandemic kind of thing. And again, it's just another person who's right. sick. Contagion. Man, look at that car. That's pretty hot. Phew. It was very it's, difficult uh, for them to make this feel real. You know, the, the dinosaurs. Right. 
This guy's like, hey, thanks for taking my wife. I'm going to get going. That's exactly right. And you're like, no, you're not. Come on, fellas. This is March Madness. You got to let me go. Oh. Yeah. So Jeez. they spent seven no, no weeks getting for me. ready with all the robots and special effects. Seven weeks. It's not your typical Corman, let's go and shoot movie. Yeah. Well, you know, like, I don't know how many theatrically released movies Corman New Horizons were cranking out in 93. You know, I could see them make new Munchies movie on the DVDs, <laughs> you know, or... Because he would crank out these, you know, he's famous for his movies in the 50s and 60s, and they had a different distribution system back yes. then. Where they were drive-ins and it just needed shit. There was double feature houses that just needed garbage. They needed a B-movie, you know. And that, they that dried to get up. He system. didn't go away. You know, he, he, he stayed relevant. Yeah, because there's like video, direct-to-video, there's direct-to-cable, there's... Right. Right now, I mean, sci-fi, a lot of those, like, Octo Shark versus Shark Opus. Those are all Corman productions. She's crazy, man. Look at her act. Really a cuckoo. I don't know. Maybe she's sane. Yeah. I mean, she, yeah, she had this clever idea. Let me uh, get it, create a pandemic <laughs> that gets women sick and produce uh, dinosaur babies. She's going to destroy the human race and replace it with robots. That's, is that the reason? I'm I sorry, with dinosaurs. That? I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the Dinosaurs robots. that happen to be robots. Right. Yeah, no, right. Yeah, it all blurs together. Uh, it's another dinosaur pregnancy. Oh, yeah. This is like, I didn't come to see this. I did not pay to go to the fucking Brookline movie house to watch this shit. I came yeah. to see Carnosaurs. Gross. Movie's so depressing. Tip tree. <laughs> Crazy. Oh my God! Well, at least we don't have to watch Sam Elliott. Not Sam Elliott. Who's that? The guy in uh, Sam Neill. So this Doc Smith, I don't know anything. Raphael Sabarj, I just don't know him. Uh, best known for his role as Archie Hopper, Jimmy Cricket in the <clears throat> Once Upon a Time, and. Huh. He was in the Mass Effect trilogy. I don't know. He was on TNT. Oh, those, those are video games. Series Murder in the First. Right. Well, I'm sure everyone was. You know, Carl, I just realized what you were saying. Laura Dern was in Jurassic Park. Yes. So it finally clicked. So the weekend that she came out, her mom her was mom. appearing in a ripoff movie. Right. So <laughs> people were like, it's a coup. Right. They couldn't tell them apart. They're like, which dinosaur movie starring uh, a Dern? Now, I don't know if it's very interesting, but also, um, uh, also, the, let me just see here. Clint Howard has a nephew uh, who's that woman in the new Jurassic Park films. Where is it? That's a bit of a stretch. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A niece, right? Bryce Howard. Bryce Howard. Bryce, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah. So, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, here it is. I don't know. Is that interesting? How, Corman couldn't have known that. Look at the doggies. I think they're so cute. They're going to get eaten. Oh, yeah. Oh, bad movie. You can, kill, you can kill 32 people, but the moment you get the doggies, that's it. Did the dog die? Yeah. Oh, all right. I'll check. Now, look, she's waxing oh. philosophic. She's waxing poetic about a world, a beautiful world that she's going to have made millions of years from now. That's so crazy. 
So she just wants to kill off the human race now. Right. So that She's you like know, a Carnosaur artist. 3 was called Carnosaur. All right. Does the dog die, Carnosaur? Does the dog die? Yes. One vote. Does an animal die besides a dog, cat, or horse? Yes. Yeah, chickens. Are animals abused? Yes. Do they mean in the... I think those are the categories. Oh, does somebody vomit? Yes. <laughs> Are there strobe effects? Yes. Is there childbirth? Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. Does a pregnant woman die? Yes. Does someone miscarry? Yes. Is there sexual content? Yes. Yes. Now, this is Sheriff. Uh, is there blood gore? Yes. Him throughout the film, and he's going to take on the dinosaur now. So he's like, come out here. It's just you and me. His name's Harrison Page. Yeah. <clears throat> Basically. Yeah, that's a cool name. Yeah, well, he's been all over, like, JAG and ER and, and Melrose Place and Quantum Leap, you know, Wonder Years, 21 Jump Street. Yeah. It's like, all over TV. Dukes of Hazard, Hill Street Blues, Columbo. Everybody's been in Columbo. Oh, he was in Kung Fu. Yeah. So. You think he played cops in all those shows? No, but but sort of. Like, Don Rickles, CPO Sharky, he was like a regular, and he was in uh, Beyond the Fa right. Valley of the Dolls. He was in Lionheart with John cool. Claude Van Damme. Okay, so he, he thinks... Friends with the one of the twins. He thinks the dinosaur's inside, but he gets a surprise! He got him. Nice shot. Yeah. Down for the count. So the cop is Victorian. One. Sheriff Fowler. Two. Three. Eight, nine, ten. Ding, 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 ding. Sheriff wins. Sheriff wins. Don't go close to it, Sheriff. I it might know, not. you dumbass. It costs a lot of money to build that. Yeah, headshot. Quick, before he chops you. <laughs> like a dinosaur knows what's going on. Oh, just shoot already. Ah! Oh, that's to you. <coughs> that looks like alien. Ooh, <coughs> valiantly dies. Yep. In the line of duty. In the line. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you're... He died in line of a duty protecting the world from a dinosaur outside a liquor store. That's what a pet shop. He got a raptor hook in his crotch. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lion of duty. Yeah, you heard me. Ba, ba, ba. So they I'll wanted like the guy who wrote this right uh, book to write the script. And he did write a first draft and he sent it to Corman. And then Corman like just never bothered to talk back, you know, just forgot about him. As a matter of fact, in the end, his credit is reduced to original story. That's not bad. You get money off of that. It might be Sometimes that you, you don't get, get credit money, off. but there's no resemblance to the guy's book except for the name, and he was really disappointed. Can we be can we be honest? That's all you need in this movie is the name Carnosaur, and it's sold. <laughs> well, all you need is Jurassic Park and it's sold. Look, if I have to kill you, yeah. Eggs, I, I think I like Jurassic Park. That was pretty good. I like Lost World. I, I thought that was pretty good. Jurassic World. Party time. Excellent. Excellent. Party on, T-Rex. Party on, Carnosaur. <laughs> See, shot Diane Ladd is so not acting in this movie. He shot one of the eggs. She's so angry. She's so angry. That's her child. Don't look at her face. She say, "Don't do it." There's the. 
uh, original anti. Yeah, they can make a vi a vaccine with that. That's what he wanted. So now he will leave the lab. Um, you see what I mean? It was so weird. He like went into the lab, got her at gunpoint, and then said, "I'm gonna hang with you for a while." Okay, Jane. <laughs> and she went, "Okay, darn it." And I'll tell you all about my evil plots. Right. Look out. Disco. Yep. God, this is the strobe lights I was warned about. The T Rex. And that's the robot. That looks like one of those hallways, like you ever been to like a New York, like a Manhattan uh, 70s inspired like office complex where they have like a long hallway with neon lights in it? Yep. You, you walk through there to get to the building. It's kind of cool. Diane. Am I done yet? No, Diane. Still camera. more 20 minutes. Yeah, well, she was asking him, Simon if she could leave. He's like, nope. Yeah, that's the final act. Scene. Uh, well, Adam, I'm just gonna sleep on set. It's just wake me when I'm when my final scene is ready. Oh no, it's a burst scene. I take it back. Yeah. Great. Now she starts showing her cooch, but it comes out of her stomach. Huh. Well, it, it is I'm mad. I don't know. I found the name Bryce Dallas Howard, Clint Howard's niece. And she is like a, yeah. I don't like the term ginger. I like redhead much better, but that's what she is. Just like her, uh, just like her uncle, Ron Howard. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was in a, a Von, uh, Lars Trier, Lars Von Trier movie. Uh, she kind of, I don't know. I, I've seen her in a bunch of stuff. You're right. I'll tell you, man, Jurassic World, who gives a fuck? I know. I Not I even my son who loves one. Jurassic Park movies doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. But what about the world? It's like, all right, here's the dinosaurs we all love. Yay, killer dinosaurs. And here's two lovable characters that we're going to stretch into three movies. Who gives a shit? I gave yeah. more shit about that little boy in Jurassic Park 3. Cause, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like Jurassic Park 3, it's Laura Dern and Sam Neill. Like, we're still here. Oh, I think... Uh, didn't Goldblum show up in three? He didn't show up in three. Who? But he shows up in World. Jeff Goldblum. He no, shows up he in show Jurassic up in the third World. One. He showed up in the second yeah. one. Oh no! Ew, close. Damn, what are you doing? Yeah. No. This is what this is what my synagogue taught me about sex. Really gross. You yeah, have to rip it out of your stomach. Yeah, I'll never have premarital sex. Yeah. She likes it. She Mama. likes it. Watch, see her face. Oh, I like it. My dinosaur. Hey. <laughs> Doc is back and he's got the serum. And of course, Good. girlfriend uh, is sick now. Charles in charge girl. So he's just going to take care of his uh, Charles and Charles girl. No, nah, he's going to fight the dinosaur and do what he has to do. Honey, how are you feeling? Oh, much better. This is a lot easier than being on the set of Charles and Charge. <laughs> she retired from acting after this film. Well, you know, if you put on a show, you get to give birth to a dinosaur. Dino dinosaur. Yeah, my dino is sore. <laughs> uh, so, right. Think about the time you, you finally left the set of Charles in Charge. <laughs> right. Relax. Think about be think about happy things like leaving Charles in Charge. So, according to Corman, uh, <laughs> Dr. Jane Tiptree was originally envisioned for a male character who had a great deal of strength at the same time was an intelligent person, but no one was available is the way he puts it. 
So Corman rewrote the character as a woman and offered it to Diane Ladd, having previously worked together on the 1966 film Wild Angels. Whoa, wow. Yeah. She must be good in that movie. 1963? 66 was Wild Angels. Yeah. Well, Bruce Turner did The Trip, right, with Corbin? Right. Back in 67 or something like that? Wait, The Trip yeah. with Jack Jack Nicholson was a Roger Corman film? Oh, you're right. I get the two mixed up. Well, The Trip and then there was Freak Out, right? Freak Out. That we sounds one of them. like Roger Corman, yeah. Well, there was one that Dick Clark ripped off. So... Dirt I'm pretty sure the, in the trip is psych, yeah. psych out. Was it called Psych Out? It it was Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I think so. And Quantum Leap. And that was guy. that was a Corman ripoff. It was a Dick Clark production, and the Corman himself took acid and made a movie called The Trip, and I believe that had Peter Fonda and Bruce Stern in it. Now is the trip with Jackie Gleason? Because that movie's still coming. Oh, that was to do. You you recommended it. Well, well, there's a oh, there's a, a series of mo recent movies called The Trip, which is uh, Steve Coogan and Rob something, uh, and they play themselves. They're kind uh -huh. of like successful British comedians, and they go to different restaurants. And they, there's four of these movies. I think five. There's the trip where they go through England, and then there's like the trip to Spain, the trip to Italy, and I think they just did the trip to Greece. I might have seen the trip. Uh, it was with, yeah, the English comedians, and it, the guy was like the fifth person he called. And... Yeah, 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 right, right, right. That, that's... But what was the Jackie Gleason one where he takes acid? That's called Skidoo. Oh, 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 oh. That, oh I, of course I recommend that movie. Skidoo yeah. with an exclamation point. It's coming. Yeah. So now he's going to give her the hot beef injection, and that will cure her of the dinosaur, I guess. But what does that mean? It'll stop okay. growing? I don't know. That's his excuse for anything. Oh, I, I know a cure. You're not going to say sex again, are you? Yes. Ow. Ow. Now, look, these are all the sick people. By the way, this is Climax Nevada, which I think we saw in some other movie. Maybe you're right. It's a memorable name. Climax. Oh, my God, he's grown. Yeah, this is the robot one. Wow. Was Climax Nevada the the uh postal the postal movie no maybe i don't remember much yeah. of that movie to be honest okay. with you except for the appendix stuff or maybe <sighs> what's that movie with dino and uh they swap you know the they pretend the wife is is from my favorite martian guy and that might be climax nevada I forget. Okay, don't worry about it. Yeah. Kiss me stupid. Well, you know, you can watch my favorite. You can watch my favorite Martian on on Tubi, T U B I, it's a streaming service. They have all the episodes. Mm hmm Yeah, that's all I got to say. Now we're getting to the final count. It's Tractor versus Dinosaur. Killdozer, right? And it's really reminiscent Boy, of know, the know. aliens when. Uh, Ripley fights the alien with that that packing and loading robot. Well, I'm sure it was an inspiration. Well, they just used what they had, which were going, 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 going. This is why I like kill dozer. It's nice and simple. A Bulldozer hits a alien rock. Alien takes over the bulldozer and kills everyone. The end. Or the end. but gets ensnared. The end. Now that it says Bobcat no. on the side, it doesn't say Eunice Corporation. See, but it's miniature too. It looks like somebody's like prop. 
Whoa, stop lifting the camera to the angle. <laughs> He's laughing. Whoa. He's more like Godzilla. He has not eaten a, like a beef jerky. This carnosaur must be hungry by now. Yep. Wait till he finds out he's a father to 400 big carnosaurs. I'm out of here. That's the only way they get this dinosaur to leave town. You're the father. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be on Maury, and Maury's going to say, You are the father. <laughs> But Jane oh, the tree is the father of all of those. So look. Why is why are we watching anything after Jane Triptree giving birth? <laughs> right? They should have ended the movie after that. The fact well, that they have more just minutes save Doc's effect. life. That's worth watching. I'd rather eat onions. Yeah, that's fine. They could have had all this before the doctor gives birth. Yes, they could have. It's just like such a gross scene. It's like, why yeah, you, it and you're right. Closure. It should have been like towards the, you know, a, a sort of finale kind of situation. You can't follow that. You can't follow that. How, how can you follow that? Diane Lamb giving birth to her stomach to a, a dinosaur. And now, he's, now there's going to be a fight. Yeah, I'm done. He's he's winning. Rawr, 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 rawr. Oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry, Adam. Adam, Adam, Adam. I'm trying to get my character. What is a carnosaur? Cut. What is a carnosaur? I'm trying to get my character down. Should I be saying rawr, 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 rawr? I don't know. Let me consult with Michael Crichton's book. You should be saying rah, 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 rah. Why don't you try acting? Oh, that's low. I have. I must get into character. <laughs> Listen, Spielberg never treated me this way, Simon. Fuck you. Sounds like you can hear the robot. I guess it's the engine of the bobcat. Oh, yeah. It's the wheels inside the dinosaur robot. So sleepy, so I ate an edible. Good night. Dead. Yay! Humankind won. Carnosaur zero. Nice bedroom, by the way. Looks like they put a mattress over the piano. Now, here's a reason why this movie sucks, right? This is our hero. He's fought hard. He's won. He's beat the dinosaur, right? He beats the dinosaur. Right. He deserves, right? We're vicariously living through him. He deserves to live and prosper and go off into the sunset with the girl. But instead, he will be shot and killed. Ooh, very 70s. No, but for no reason. It's okay. random. He didn't say. Well, that's how George Romero is the crazy end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why would they shoot him anyway? He's not a, if they're affected, it doesn't mean you got to shoot him 12 times. Look, that guy hit him on the shoulder. He, he was dead after the fourth time, asshole. Yeah. Yeah, shut up. This is one of the real reasons why this movie stinks. There's no... Oh, then they have to burn the body. Right. Wow, so There's he, he no saved him from the, the dinosaur thing. He struggled hard to win. It... Wow. Ew. Did Burning a Pregnant Lady? Classy movie. Oh, no, and their DVD collection. Shrek 2. And and they're and killing that. the... Um... <laughs> well, what me worry... They're also killing the, the yeah. serum that has the cure. They're burning it. I know what, you know, it reminds me of The Crazies. It was remade too, the George Romero movie about a town that just goes nuts. And Donald Pleasant is the one guy who could who can cure it. And he runs out of the escapes only to be shot on, on sight. And that's Night of the Living Dead too, right? Oh, here we go. Ooh, the reverse scroll. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We had watched Carnosaur from 1993. 
Carl, what'd you think of this movie? Teeth of shit. Good for your show. Lots to talk about. No. It's depressing in my show. Yeah, a lot to talk about. Just depressing premise. I never liked this movie. But we were able to watch two <laughs> Adam Simon movies in a row. Right. Check out last week's episode. You can go to PCRcollective.org, a.k.a. mediaradio.fm, hit Podcast Archives, and find it uh, with the previous week's date. Wow. All right. So we get to do the reverse credits. This is the part where I get out of the uh, the Brookline movie house like, fuck, what did I do uh-huh. in my life? Right. I think it was a midnight showing, too. So I walked oh, out like good. two so in the at morning. At least you like, don't yeah. have that. There's that always that bummer when you leave the movie theater into broad daylight. Yeah, right. Well, speaking of broads, I was on a date. You know, when I was young, Mike, I would go on these dates, but I would always take them to see, like, Sandlot, which is a bunch of boys, or Problem Child, which is, like, misogynistic baby (laughs) shit. I never took, or Carnosaur, I never took anyone. You know, one time I was on a date in the early 90s. I went to see Goodfellas, and it was great, but, you know, my date dropped me off, and I was just like, what a neat movie. Where's my date? You know, like, I got to see Aladdin, and when I went, uh, my date had her roommates with them, and I had to sit through a kids movie, and they dropped me off. That was charming. Uh-huh. That was a good way to spend my young life. Uh, operating title, service imagery, chickens in process. <laughs> yeah, what is depressing? Even the credits are drab. Yeah, stage Scary. manager, studio teacher, craft services. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. I mean Michael, you, Michael. German, who did Keep craft going. services. Well, usually they'll have something clever, like Chicken and Things, or, you know, Bobby's film, not this movie. Seth, All right. This hey, Carl, this is a top uh, I I have two movies that I really want to see, yeah. and I can't pick them between them. Okay. So I want to see The Castaways of Gilligan's Island. It's a TV movie. Would you be into that, or should we yeah. do the other movie? No, Castaways is good. Do the other movie? All right. So we want to change the pace after these doubleheader of Adam Simon. I'm going to save my other good, bad movie. Read the tour book. Oh, tour is science fiction. So next week's movie is a made-for-TV movie. It was the second in a series of uh, TV-length movies. This one is called Castaways of Gilgan's Island. It stars the late Bob Denver, the late Alan Hale Jr., the late Russell Simmons, and... Uh, not Russell Simmons. That's the the, the rap mogul. Uh, Russell Johnson, and special guest the late Tom Bosley and the late Maria Wallace. I don't think we have a uh, trailer for it. Oh, it's Carl. Do you want to do the trailer for Castaways of Gilligan's Island? In a world where Gilligan is castaway, I'm castaway. Okay, wait. I found it. The Castaways on Gilligan's Island trailer. Two minutes twenty seven. Did find it. Okay. Okay, guys. We're gonna actually hear. The actual, so we want you to go. Uh, for our friends listening, still listening, where can they find this trailer? Who's hosting it? Okay. Uh, okay. Y- you search for the Castaways on Gilligan's Island trailer, and the channel is Paul Dean Martin. Paul Dean Martin. And uh, okay. I'm at 000 buffered. In three, two... All right. One, which should I do? Go, 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 and get everyone all fucking screwed up. Three, two, one, go. All right. Ooh, some guys having fun already. Paul Dean's kind of. Thank you, Paul. This is probably a fan made trailer. I guess. That is not the USS Minnow, that's an airplane. Is there something wrong with the audio? I don't hear. Weird. Yeah, I have it at 98. I don't. I hear like, oh, it's a minnow three. I think this guy is soliciting us. I don't know what the fuck we're watching, Carl. Right, it's a plane having trouble, so I guess it'll crash on the island. It's a minnow three. Oh, finally. It really is Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Yeah. 
here on Gillian's Island. They're just a little bit older. And, uh, and one of them is not the original cast member. Can you figure out who? Uh, I'll probably Ginger, but I'll look. Marianne would definitely be on this show. Yeah, it's Ginger. Yep, Ginger is not the original Ginger in this. Why? Dyed her hair. I don't know. Why don't you ask uh, Scorch or whatever her name was? Okay, I will. From uh, a very Brady Christmas. So this audio is some other audio than the trailer. Yeah, this trailer is kind of weird. Well, I think I've seen this one. This is not the Harlem Globetrotters in that crash. On that's a different movie. Uh, I think this one they open up like a fantasy island love boat uh, resort. And we get to see adventures of like Tom Bosley and his wife on a, a resort. Come on, you. Or not. I have no idea. You pine. What is it? Pine space nut? What was <laughs> You far out space nut, you? Far out space nut. Okay, that looks interesting. Bye. We shall see. Castaways. Okay. Castaways on Gilligan's Island. Okay. Castaways on, not of Gilligan's Island. You're absolutely right. Castaways on Gilligan's Island uh, will be next week's movie. So check it out. You can follow our podcast if you haven't already at L-W-A-S-L-M-O-Y-T. That's the reason for the acronym. Carl takes our episodes in the movies we watch and syncs them together. We have over like 50 videos and a great variety if you go to our YouTube channel. You could do L-W-A-F-L-M-O-Y-T. Don't subscribe. Don't like uh, our video. Just check it out. And uh, we're also on Twitter with 30 followers. And we have a Facebook page. Let's watch a <laughs> full movie on YouTube. And we'll be back here on Mutiny Radio. Support MutinyRadio.fm. A lot of crazy stuff on the air. And you could uh, – our GoFundMe descended. We want this uh, place to still exist. So go.